Hello, my name is Lisa Winicky and I am the founder of The Good News Guide and today it is my pleasure to be in conversation with a really dear friend and a woman who has had a huge impact on my life in the last 18 months since meeting her. Belinda is a, an extraordinary woman as well as an extraordinary relationships coach. I, as I said, I've been working with her for the last 18 months. So before I go on, because I do like to talk, I want to say welcome and thank you so much for joining me today. Belinda is not your, and I don't, I don't know what I would say in so far as a relationships coach, but she brings so much richness to the table. When I mean richness, there's a combination of a whole lot of skills, which is why her work has been really transformational for me. Um, she brings in transfer, transpersonal psychology, neural and behavioral change, quantum psychology, which really speaks volumes to me as somebody who loves Joe Dispenza's work, meditation, epigenetics, and the list really goes on. She's been involved in this space for 20 years. And so her experience is deep, as I said, and she's, she's worked with obviously thousands of people. Her flagship program, which I've recently gone through called Love Codes, was again also a beautiful experience and has taught me a lot about myself in relationship with partners. So welcome and thank you. And firstly, I'd really love just to start by you sharing how you're going right now in this period of time where we're in isolation and where relationships for a lot of people are not so easy. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Um, thank you, by the way. And, and thanks for having me. <laughs> um, well, I like to call it family retreat. <laughs> so when this whole thing first started, my family and I chose to, um, to retreat together and to create a sacred space to be safe for ourselves and to help our um, whole world to be safe, but also to create a beautiful sacred space for us to go deep. And that's what it's been for us. Um, now, I... You know, my family and I, we've been having a really beautiful time, to be perfectly honest. It's been wonderful. Um, and, you know, <laughs> with the, the danger of sounding a little bit cliche, but we really have had a beautiful time. Um, it's been a very deepening experience for me. I'm a mother as well, as you know, I have a four-year-old boy. And so um, becoming all of a sudden full-time, you know, there's no kinder, there's no nanny or anything. So um, I've been full-time with him, but I've really truly surrendered to that and have seen this as an opportunity to go deep into that relationship and deep with my husband, who is still working from home. So there's not a lot more time that we see each other, but um, it's, been, it's been beautiful. And there's been external pressures, of course, because of what's going on in our world and how do we respond to that. Um, our relationship has gone through some challenges. And I do remember in the, I think it was the second week, we had an argument and my husband and I really don't argue very much. But when we do argue, we argue really well. And that's what is one key, you know, to having a healthy relationship is arguing well. Anyhow, we had this argument and my personal thing, um, you know, challenge in relationships is about feeling trapped. You know, I don't like to feel trapped and I don't like to feel controlled. And I'm sure none of your listeners can relate to that at all. <laughs> but um, I had this moment, we were having this argument and you know, sometimes you're, when you're in that crux of an argument where you feel like it's not going to go anywhere. And that can be one of the most frustrating points is when you, and that's when you can feel trapped. And I, I remember stopping and feeling that feeling, that old familiar feeling of, I want to run away. Now we're in a point in our relationship and I'm in a point with myself and my, my type of relating where I, I recognize that old pattern and it doesn't have a hold on me like it did in the past. And this time I recognized it and I went, oh shit. And Maureen said, what? And I said, you realize that if I really, like if we wanted to like split and, and, and get apart from each other, we probably couldn't right now. And it really propelled me into thinking what it's like for people in relationship at the moment who are in a home who might be feeling that, that feeling of wanting to get away of this isn't working. I need to get out of here. And how confusing that can be because even when we're in our regular everyday life, 
that might be a pattern for some people. Like I can't cope, I'm not coping. And when people are becoming conscious and awakening, like all of your viewers I'm sure are or have done or are doing, then we start to question, well, how much of that wanting to get away is just my pattern and comes from wounding? And how much of that is actually a part of myself that I need to listen to and respect? Mm -hmm. And that's just in normal everyday life. So then throw us into um, isolation mm -hmm. where we're cut off from all of our other avenues of relating, then the, the pressure cooker's on. And it really made me feel for some of these people. And I know some people, some friends and some clients who, uh, who have really struggled. Mm -hmm. um, and some who've actually split up, you mm. know, and are still living in the same house. And that's really challenging. Mm. Um, for us personally, we really, I mean, Warwick and I have a very strong commitment to growth. And so whenever blockages come up for us, we're really committed to seeing that as a growth point, And that's what we do. Doesn't mean to say it's been super easy the whole time. Wow, I mean, there's so much that I could delve into in that. But, you know, I think that there's a really, what you were talking about is that pattern of feeling trapped, mm -hmm. which, you know, having worked with me, that that was something that I had to work through before I stepped out of my marriage, mm -hmm. ensuring that I wasn't buying in or I wasn't running away from something because of a pattern as opposed to the reason why I really, my heart was calling for me to make that choice. That was profound. So I really want to stop. I'd really love just to pause there and just, just, because that's huge for us to recognise that we think it's the other person or we think by doing something that it's going to resolve it. But what, what we're doing is what happens, the patterns that show up in relationship are those patterns for often that exist within us that have done for years. Yeah, yeah, uh, certainly. Whatever, whatever um, emotional experience we're having in a situation, it's always got to do with us. Mm. Um, and when you're in a relationship, it's just so damn easy to blame the other person, isn't it? But the reality is that, and that's not to say that partners and, all, and other people are always perfect. And this is where mm. people really trip up, mm. right? Because another pattern can be, um, for some people, is always thinking it's my fault. You know, it's never their fault. So we really, it, it is something to be really aware of and to have some wisdom around, just have some clarity around. And I know you've gone through this yourself and really come out the other end. And that's got a lot to do with response, self-responsibility. But understanding that if you have an emotional reaction to something that your partner has said or done or not said or done, then it's definitely something within you. Because if... It's something, if they say or do something, and it's even if it's ridiculous, if you don't have that pattern inside yourself, that program inside yourself, you just look at them and go, oh, you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. it wouldn't, you wouldn't get all riled up about it. So if you're having an emotional reaction to something, you can bet your bottom dollar that there's something within yourself to, to process. And again, I'm going to keep bringing it back to this because this is so important, and I see this in my work all the time. We need to bring it back to ourselves. That doesn't mean that the person you're with is the guy for you or the woman for you. Mm. Just because that's my emotional reaction, that it's not black and white. Mm. It's not either or. You know, I'm a big fan of the word and. Mm. And I think that we can all really learn, not just in relationships, but in everything we can learn, we can grow so much from incorporating and. So if I, if I have a trigger, if I have an emotional trigger or an emotional reaction to something that my partner has said, that's my, my thing to look at, to process. And he also may not be the right guy for me. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Which, as you know, <laughs> for me, is a never-ending... Like, it's just something that is... A, you know, you say I've come out the other end and our work will continue, who knows for how long, because relationships, I'm going to be honest, I don't find intimate relationships. I'm realising the dysfunction of my patterns in relationship. And I really want to own that because I don't want anyone sitting here thinking that this is necessarily an easy thing. I think relationships, intimate relationships, maybe for some of us easier than others. But for me, it, it is certainly, a, it's a challenge. It's an area like there's always growth in it, which is why I'm obviously working with somebody like you because I, when we're unconscious of our patterns, you know, it, it is that constant projection onto the other person. And I, I like you, I value, like growth is my number one value. And so therefore I'm in it to, to grow, but, uh, you know, I'm not going to obviously stay in a relationship with somebody 
because I, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a, ho a whole nother, another conversation, but what I actually would really just following on from that is talking about, you know, something we mentioned yesterday is the difference between relating or relationships and love. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really big, it's a really big area and a very important topic because in our culture, in our modern and westernised culture, we don't realise the difference between love and relationship. And that's something that I've seen for sure in all of the work that I've done. So, you know, we think, and, and then again, in, in our culture, and this is really important, is to, to know the distinction between um, love and attraction. So, you know, we spoke yesterday how, about the fact that there is a difference between love and relationship, but there's actually even a difference between love, relationship, attraction, and friendship. And they're all different areas. And in our Western culture, we try and lump them all in together. We think that if I'm attracted to somebody and they make me feel good, then that's love. And if I love someone, then I'm having a relationship with them. And that's just couldn't be further from the truth. We need to really break it down. If you want to have healthy relationships, you need to break it down and understand the different categories that they can fall into. Mm -hmm. So if we look at, um, let's look at love to begin mm -hmm. with. Okay. Love actually in itself is a state. Love is a state. Love is profound and it's way beyond liking somebody or admiring somebody it's way beyond anything like that the, the the best way the easiest way to describe it for me is to people who've got children you know especially as a mother not, not all the time but in those moments when you feel that unconditional love for your child and it doesn't matter what they do you know I remember reading a story about this um criminal who he was actually he actually murdered people an awful, awful thing, but he's, you know, it was from his mother's point of view and how she still loves him. Of course she does. Does she like him? No. So love is way beyond the personal. Love is something that we learn to be able to do. You can't love just like that. I mean, we come into the world as love, but it, it's taken, you know, we're deprogrammed to be able to love so quickly. And so we need to learn how to love. So let's just put that on the side for the moment. Love is is transpersonal, it's way beyond the personal. Mm. Then we have what we think is love, which is actually attraction. Mm. And in our culture, attraction or romantic love. Okay, and that's the heart flutters and that's chemistry. Mm. You know, that's when we have a good DNA match mm. that tells my body that you, my body and your body would make good babies. That, that's what that chemical reaction is. Mm. Now, this is a very intelligent system to make healthy human beings, but this is before modern medicine and, and also you know, everyone wants, wants to have children, right? So it's not an intelligent system for finding a good relationship at all. Stop there. Okay. So for anyone watching, because <laughs> I fall into this category, have uh, definitely, I think, because that's what we're conditioned to, to look for. That's what we read about. That's what we see about. And now dating, dating apps are like really concretizing that this, what you've just said, that's love. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of, un, it's a lot of unlearning. A lot of unlearning. A lot of unlearning. Mm -hmm. I call it the, the, the Disney fantasy. You know, we grow up with, we don't have great role models of what relationships are supposed to be. I mean, I'm sure most people watching this will say, yeah, well, my parents' relationship wasn't great. So what we do is we consciously and unconsciously take tidbits from what's around us. So it's usually movies, commercials, mm -hmm. magazines. So they're the, it's really, it's bullshit idea mm -hmm. of what relationships are supposed to be. And that's what we form into the back of our mind, into our unconscious. And so when we're going, so it's not our fault. It's not like we're crazy or we're, you know, to blame, but yeah. we're also, but we are creating that. We're going around looking for that, looking for romantic love, which is just romance and attraction. And it is never a bedrock of a healthy relationship. It may be in there as well as, but it is not the foundation for a healthy relationship. And then on top of that, we have friendship 
or as well as that. There's friendship, companionship. And what I found in my work too is that people who've already had their families built their empire, maybe who are a bit older, you know, heading towards retirement or in retirement, companionship actually, friendship becomes um, a much higher priority when it comes to finding a relationship. And in my opinion, I think friendship is actually a really important ingredient in a long-term relationship. Mm. And then, however, the, what, you know, the, the big kind of kahuna that we want to get to is relationship itself. So relationship is a, a completely different entity that exists between two people. Relationship is the way that one person and another person relates. Yeah. And just, just backtracking for a moment, if you, uh, to get a bit of an idea, to paint a little bit of a picture, you know, in our culture, we go for romantic love and that, that chemistry, and then we try and build a relationship based on that. And then and we don't have the tools. So then we're left scrambling, trying to relate, create a friendship and love. Now, if we look at some other cultures, um, some more traditional cultures, and I have um, some clients who come from Indian, an Indian background, a few different ones over time that I've worked with who have it'd be really interesting to work with. And we've looked into some of their traditions where they have arranged marriages. Mm. And, you know, there was, there was two of them that were dead against being in an arranged marriage themselves, but they weren't dead against the idea. And all three of them weren't dead against the idea. And the reason for that was this in, in, in their culture, traditionally, um, they had a much stronger idea of love or spiritual love. They had a, they had a devotional practice. Mm -hmm. It was part of their everyday. So that aspect of their life was quite rich. So then when these arranged marriages happen, and I'm not suggesting this is the way that we should do it, just to give an idea of a different way that ours is not the only way. Mm -hmm. And people in our culture often look at arranged marriages and go, oh, that's just shit. I would never do that. Mm -hmm. But what often happens is, the people who create the, uh, who arrange the marriages traditionally anyway, especially in Indian um, culture, they'd have a Vedic astrologer do it. And they look at the compatibility, you know, so friendship and connection and how they're going to be compatible. And they often get it right. So these people come together and they already have a good compatibility and they create a very healthy relationship and they're able to learn to um, envelope that relationship in love because they already have a good experience or they have some experience of what it is to love. Now, in our culture, we need to start to understand that we need to relate to the person that we're in, we're with. We need to have a relationship with them. And what you and I spoke about briefly yesterday, I think it was yesterday, is the fact that most people in our culture, we don't really, and I'm, I'm guilty of this, you know, before I did this work and went really deep into it, I wasn't relating to the person in front of me. I was interacting with myself, basically. You know, I would speak to that person, trying to get them to be who I wanted them to be. I would be responding to my own reaction as it played off or bounced off that person, not mm. relating to them. Mm. Can we just, just before you go on, what does then, can you define what does it mean then? Can you give it like a picture so that people can actually visualize what you mean when you say relating to another person as opposed yeah. to wanting them i mean it's quite clear wanting somebody to be something that we want but what does it what does that even like what does that look like like great question lisa thank you for asking um so let me give you an example okay so let's say for instance um i want to give you a real example um let's say for instance okay i have this one client who's in a relationship and they 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 find the other person to be a bit annoying, okay? So they find that person's behaviour annoying and she often is like, they'll, they'll often have conversations or he'll act in a certain way. So he has these particular kind of characteristics and things that he says. And when he does that, she says to him things like, could you maybe not say it that way, please? Or, you know, when you say it that way, I'd rather you... you if you said it this way, it would be better because then I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel so uncertain about what you're talking about. Now, that sounds really rational, doesn't it? It sounds almost kind of amiable. But the problem is this woman is, is afraid to relate. This woman's not capable of relating. So she's instead trying to control the situation, trying to get him to respond in a way that will make her feel like she's in the world that she wants to be in. Now, we do that, we avoid relating because if we related instead, we would have to see all the things we don't want to see. So what she's learning to do, this woman, is 
instead when he displays that behaviour and she feels annoyed, she bees annoyed. So she lets herself be annoyed. Oh, I hate that. And she might say something to him like, that's shit, I hate it when you do that. Or she might say nothing but just be like, ugh, and just have that feeling of annoyance in her body. Now, what happens there is a few amazing things. It's so rich with potential. First and foremost, as far as the relationship goes, she's actually having a relationship with that person now rather than trying to make him into whatever it is that she thinks she needs him to be. He feels more respected, believe it or not. Even though she's having this response to him, he's getting to be himself. She's getting to know who he actually is rather than trying to get him to be somebody else and, and fooling herself that he is this other thing if only he would follow my steps mm -hmm. he also has an opportunity to respond to her her reaction in a true way so he can step up and say hey i don't want to make you feel that way and then from inside himself he can respond in a different way and they can build their relationship it's just rich with so much potential and ultimately for her she gets to feel her annoyance which means that she takes responsibility for her own response and go oh well Where's that coming from? Mm. And then she's able to look at where it comes from and the cause of it and process that. Or she can say, well, I don't actually really like him. And they can start to realise that, well, they don't like each other. And then they can, they can move away instead of forcing each other to be something that they're not, just so that they can avoid the truth of what they're really feeling. Mm. Again, so much in that because... As you and I both know, so many people are not are disconnected from their feelings as mm -hmm. that's been the biggest hurdle for me. And I think for a lot of people is, is, is not being one, not even knowing, like, what do you mean? How do I feel? So to come back and actually know. So because you're so, we're so used to projecting all of that and, and wanting to control and fix that in order to feel something inside. But we, we just completely mm -hmm. lost. So there's that. There's that. That's big for a lot of people. And I don't know, I think for a portion of the people listening, that's going to resonate because they don't know what it feels like. The other thing I just wanted to mention, one of the things that you've worked with me, which I found, and I think it falls into this, this category, is that um, taking responsibility for how a situation feels as opposed to you need to do this and controlling. So does this, you know, you've given me one of the practices is to when something happens with my partner, for me to notice how I feel when he does this. And then to say, rather than, uh, uh, when, you, when this happens, I feel. So I'm taking responsibility for how I feel. And then he's aware of how I feel, but I'm not asking him to do anything with that. It's then up to him to decide what he... Yeah, really important. And I want to make a, a distinction here between having to tell someone how we feel. So we don't even have to do that. Mm. Yeah. Um, but certainly, so what you were saying is that, yeah, we don't even know what we feel half the time, right? So how the hell do we do this? It's a great question. Mm. Um, and just, again, just to clarify, we do have feelings going on all the time. And that behaviour of controlling people's responses actually is an, is an unconsciously learned behaviour to avoid what it is that we are feeling. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So if you want to make a, cho a conscious choice to say... We're going to pause there. And I'd like you to repeat that because I think that is really key yeah yeah it's important okay so um so most of the time the behavior that we do where we're controlling other people's responses is to avoid what it is that we're actually feeling it's not the majority yeah we're doing just this 100 percent all the time i mean even you know even now you look on social media and people talking about what's going on at the moment and all the projections it's that is a way of avoiding what we are ourselves feeling. So if you're going to make a conscious choice to start in that situation of relating when you're feeling an emotional reaction, if you want to make a conscious choice and say, I'm going to start to notice what I'm feeling, that choice in itself, I promise you, mm -hmm. will bring you, start, bring you to a place where you can start to feel your feelings because they're there and they want to be felt. Mm -hmm. Now, digging a little bit deeper because our clever little minds can often you know cover it up if you feel your body and i love this idea that feelings are called feelings because they genuinely have a physical component to them mm. so if you don't know what you're feeling stop feel your body 
and there will be a sensation somewhere in your body. And if you can just become aware of that, I guarantee you that you will feel the feeling behind it. Now, what we often do is we try to intellectualize it. Mm. Oh, I'm feeling this way because dot, 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 and it should be another, another thing, getting away from the feelings. All we need to do, and this is specifically to do with relating. If you want to relate authentically, and remember, we want to relate authentically so that we can know if we love that person and relate well and vice versa. So if you want to relate authentically, all you need to do is stop and feel your feeling and then respond from there. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean to say mm -hmm. anything, mm -hmm. but it means, so let's say my genuine feeling in this moment is I feel sad. And let me just give you a clue. Usually underneath it is sad or feeling unsafe for most people. Let's say I feel sad. And when I feel sad, when my husband does something or acts in a certain way and I feel sad, I will just be sad. And I might be sad and go and make a cup of tea. Or I might be sad and finish the conversation, but in a state of sadness. Or I might say, I feel really sad if that feels appropriate. But you don't need to always mm. say it. It's just letting yourself, I mean, that's the point, right? Relationships are so that we can be ourselves. And there is a part of you that feels sad. So feel sad. Don't avoid the feeling. And then this person can relate to you as you are. So really, I mean, look, there's again so much. And I know this is definitely my edge because I do say rather than just feel. And I think, again, most people would probably relate to that. But really, essentially, what you're saying is to be in a, what you would call a juicy relationship or whatever term that you would give this, we need to not avoid our feelings. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I mean... As a it's foundation. Just, it's just, and it sounds like a no-brainer. And this is the thing, though, is that there's a lot of instruction out there to say things like this don't avoid your feelings be honest be authentic but the how is what is so tricky mm -hmm. and it doesn't need to be but what we need to understand is the reason we've been avoiding these feelings for so long is because of our programming mm -hmm. and we're afraid we're right. going to not be safe and a big one especially for women men too but especially for women we're actually afraid of seeing that this person is not right for me. Mm. We don't want to see that. So we avoid feeling. Which is then why people are so programmed to try and control because it's easy to control and, and, and make sure of that. So then I don't, wouldn't have to see that it's actually not mm -hmm. right for That's me. That's right. And this is fed by a deep sense of unworthiness that most people watching this were like, oh, I don't feel unworthy. But most of us have a deep sense of unworthiness because, and that's another reason to avoid honestly relating to somebody because if you do, if you accept this person is behaving this way and I accept it makes me feel this way, well, if I let myself feel this way, the only way that person is going to step up and love me and hug me and hold me and be kind to me is if I'm worthy of unconditional love. And I don't believe that I am. But you know what's really awesome is the moment you do that, and you know this yourself, and you'll be able to say to your own, to your listeners, the moment you do that, so much more often than not, the other person steps up and receives and accepts you unconditionally. And in that moment, the healing that happens mm -hmm. is profound. I've got, I've got full goosebumps. Full, which I always know it's like you know we know when that happens for me it's like it's, it's the ring of truth it's like that that is that is it like I mean we, we read it and I and I was just talking to a guy before and we were talking about you can intellectually know stuff like you know you can know what it's like you can know that we're all one and you can know that we're not you know we're we're not separate you can know it but until you know it like in your cell in cellularly like you've experienced that yeah. it's it's it can actually leave you feeling dare I say it I felt really I don't, I don't know if it's dejected but sad for a long time because I was wanting to experience it yes yes wanting to get it I couldn't I just couldn't yeah. I just couldn't 
couldn't get it. But now I, I really get it. And, you know, interestingly that we would talk about worthiness because, as you know, I've shared, it was in Niagara Falls with Warwick, your husband, who I happened to, of course, be put into a Dr. Joe retreat. And I had the most profound walking meditation where I actually really cellularly felt myself walking out of this state of, why the fuck do I feel I'm like, like I'm done with this. I'm, I really was done and I arrived at the falls and, you know, and, and Warwick was there and we had this beautiful, you know, joyful interaction. And, and it was, it was really, it was really a, yeah, it, it has been transformational because as I've spoken to you about in this current relationship, it, I don't feel like, they, I'm not feeling the unworthy, so I am feeling much more safe. I'm actually not, not feel, I feel safe to express how it is that I'm feeling. Um, and that's a, that's, a, that's a new thing. So really all of this is showing me that like with anything, if you want to be, if you want to have a, create an amazing life, if you want to create an incredible relationship, it requires support. Like it requires yeah. somebody to support you because we're not conditioned to be in a relationship that's where we're relating in the way that you're talking about. I mean, what you're actually sharing, I mean, I've kind of got it because I've been working with you, but not in the way that you've explained it today. And it's like, we are all conditioned to step yeah. into a relationship and looking for the thing that's... And it was interesting just going back, doubling back to what you were saying about the Indian culture. I have, it just reminded me, I've had numerous Uber drivers that have been in arranged marriages and they are so happy yeah. and they talk about how much they love. And I'm, I've, I've got to the point where I've stopped, I've stopped questioning it. <laughs> well, like, yeah. Who am I to think that I know yeah. that this is actually the right way? And you're, you're telling me you're extremely happy. Yeah, it's, it, I, looked, I looked into it quite a lot, a long time ago, like 10, 10 years ago. And it is really, it's, it's a very interesting phenomena. Mm. And yeah, it is because there is a difference. And these cultures generally have a little bit more or well, a lot more um, of a relationship to the divine, so to actual mm. love. Mm. So they've already got that going on. And something I can recommend to our culture too is that doesn't, it doesn't mean that we're all stuffed, right? What does it mean? Mm -hmm. Just for some practicalities for people. So we've talked about the practicalities of how to be in touch with your feelings so that you can stop projecting so that you can actually have an opportunity to what you were saying before, be met, to truly be met. I mean, everyone that wants to be in a, in a really fantastic relationship, they want to feel met. And the only way they can do that, right, is by being themselves and being honest with how they feel and giving, a, the, letting there be an opportunity to be met. Mm -hmm. And as far as our, just a little kind of practical application for people in our culture, if you want to have a, a healthy relationship, whether you started off with attraction, friendship, love, whatever, it doesn't matter. But just we need to be sure to cultivate all of those areas. So most people will have cultivated the attraction or the chemical area. And um, so cultivate your relationship to the divine. It doesn't need to be in your relationship. You don't need to be cultivating an unconditional love to your partner. Just cultivate that muscle within yourself. So somewhere in your life, you're having a relationship to actual love. It will filter into your relationship. Mm -hmm. You don't need to worry about that. And then, you know, learn to relate with somebody as we spoke about actually mm -hmm. who they are and how they're behaving rather than trying to control it. Mm -hmm. Friendship is an interesting one. That one I think has got a lot to do with compatibility and mm -hmm. that is something that you can't really change or choose. You either are or aren't compatible and that's a whole other can of worms there as well. Mm -hmm. And if you can work on those, those areas, then you can have a wonderful relationship, but they, they are distinct sections. Mm -hmm. And that sort of leads me to, um, you know, as I said at the start that I did the personal coaching with you. Actually, I'm just going to quickly share, I love a good story. So I'd like to share how you and I met because, I mean, I have met the most incredible people in the last 18 months. And really, <laughs> it has been the divine that has literally sent people, mm -hmm. as, you know, we, we, we would both agree with. So I'm on my way back from my first Dr. Joe retreat, as is Belinda. Didn't meet at the retreat because there's like 1,500 people. I've had this awakening during a meditation, like what the hell, like seeing my marriage, you know, I, it wasn't what I thought. 
and in front of me, the seat in front of me is Belinda. And uh, Belinda hears me talking to another um, woman who'd been at the retreat, we're having a chat and Belle's turned around and like, you know, she was planning on watching Netflix because she had a real, Caleb was really young at the time. And she's like, I just feel like I need to be in conversation. Of course, Belle's a relationships coach. I'd never obviously been, I'd never needed a coach. And, and I didn't even know in the time sitting on the plane as we've talked about that I was going to embark on this. But six weeks later, you know, you and I are in conversation and you've been my my coach ever since and you know you were you worked very profoundly very very powerfully powerfully with me one-on-one -on -one during the separation which was intense mm -hmm. intense and you know a lot of people have said wow you guys have done it like remarkably well and I and not but and I know that a big part of that was because I had you coaching me to see and witness and ensure that I wasn't, because I was ready to, like, I had that feeling of trapped. I, I just was like, that was a pattern. So rather, and you really held me accountable to not just jump because I was looking for freedom, but to actually assure that I was actually getting what I needed to get and experience that before I made the choice. So that was, that was, I mean, that was profound. And what's happened as a result, I mean, anyone can, anyone that follows my story knows that, the uncoupling has been really seamless and done with ease and grace and, and love and so much love. And so um, you're very, I mean, I don't need to say that to you, but to anyone listening, if you happen to be in a situation, whether it's you are feeling like I was or you're really unsure to have somebody actually supporting you to ensure that not the because who knows what the right, there's no right decision, but to ensure that you're really grounded in whatever choice you choose to make and not rushing because I was ready to rush and you, you did. You, you, you ensured that I didn't just jump like a bull at a gate like I can be and, and make a really rash decision. So I, I've said thank you to you before, but, um, but you know, it's, it's part of who I am is as a result of the work that I've done with you. So I know how powerful it is. And then going on and doing Love Codes, which has been in itself remarkable, which is your flagship program, which is a group coaching program. And I know at this point in time, um, you're not running it because of the situation we're in worldwide. Um, but that in itself and the people that I have met through it, so the people that you attract to your work is phenomenal. So the community. So I just really want to touch on the things that I... that how you're contributing to the world is not just in your work, but it's actually in the community that you're, you're creating. So for anyone that's watching that is like at all interested, that it's, there's, there's so much, there's so much to get and it's layers. Like it's not just a, you know, I feel like I could really have coaching for a very long time, <laughs> a very long time. Um, so that leads me to ask you, so like right now, what are, like if somebody is wanting to connect with you or they're like, oh, she's not doing, offering these programs, like what, what are the options, like what's available for people? Um, I will be running the program again shortly. It's really just a matter of um, working in tune with my life situation and family needs as far as being able to have the space to do it. So it will be coming soon. I will share a link with your audience so that they can sign up and they can receive uh, my audio training, which is normally um, a paid product, but I'd be happy to share that with your audience. Awesome. So they can, yeah, they can get a dip into what the program's all about. Mm -hmm. And and if they share, if they're interested in doing the program, then they can just let me know and I will let them know as soon as the next one's running. As far as private coaching goes, as you know, I, I really, only take very few people and it's people who've done my, my work already um, simply because as you know even though it's a relationship program we go extremely deep extremely fast um, and so it's really people that do my work really need to have done quite a bit of self-development already Mm. But certainly there's lots of ways people can, can still access my work. Um, I do, I'm doing some lives every week so that I can keep sharing content with people. I'm giving away a lot of content on my Facebook page. It's a great place to, to find my stuff. And on my website, there's blogs, there's lots of articles and lots of pieces so people can read up on that. But certainly I can let people know when the next program is running for sure. Awesome. So will you provide me those links so I can pop them under the, under yep. the recording? 
Um, and, you know, I mean, yeah, things are changing rapidly. Who knows when we're going to be, when the, you know, the external conditions are going to change and then all of a sudden, not that we'll ever go back, ever go back to the way things were. But relationships and love and, like, love and relationships, it's, it's not one of us. <laughs> I mean, that's what life is. That's what life is all about yeah i always say aside from health relationships are the most important thing in our life mm. yeah isn't it funny i i hadn't even I, I was thinking relationships number one but of course of course that goes without saying yeah they, they are they're um they're really what what gives us the, the the joy to actually be in these human bodies and we're always in them anyway whether we want to be in them or not, we are, you know, we're always in relationship. And so learning to do it well and learning to let them be a crucible, a place for growth mm. um, is, is the best thing we can do. And, and, you know, I think it's really important just to mention there that relate, in my opinion, relationships are a place for growth, but they're not supposed to be constantly a battle. Uh, the people watching this who think, yeah, my relationship, it's because we're growing and we're soulmates and so we trigger each other's stuff. Yes, you're going to do a little bit of that, but the relationship you choose to be in as a lifelong relationship can be a peaceful place. It can be a place that's mostly a place of feeling safe and loved and calm and happy with peppered with, you know, challenges. And I think that's actually a really great place to end because I think about a number of us in this space and they, we probably actually have fallen into that bucket of thinking that a relationship is all about triggers and overcoming our triggers. <laughs> As I'm listening, I'm like, I think I've been there. <laughs> You're me both. <laughs> yeah, so much. And look, we haven't even touched upon love codes as a program which is like yeah if we were to pull that apart and actually dive into that which i really would love to do in another conversation so let's do that where maybe we can sit on the couch together that'd be amazing will um, we have to be will we have to be like a meter apart and wear a mask or hopefully no. we can level up <laughs> well, we could we could sit on the other couches and have two cameras <laughs> one filming another no, no, well, I, I, I've heard something's been lifted today as we both, well, I don't watch the news and I, I know, know you don't, or we sort of dip in and dip out and get what we need. But um, anyway, next time it'll be on the couch together and I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for everything you've given me, but also that how you're contributing to relationships in this world because it is, as you've said, it is very deep, it is deep work. Um, which is why I've never really known how to describe because I don't see you as a coach. <laughs> Not that I have an issue with coaches at all, but it's kind of like, how do you package like, and maybe because I don't like actually boxing anyone into any particular name. It's like, this is Belinda Bailey and these are all the things that she, she um, contributes to the world. So I love you and thank you for sitting on the couch, your couch with me today. And yeah, we'll connect very soon. Thank you. Thanks so much, Lisa. It's so, so nice to speak with you anytime. <laughs> awesome. See you soon. Bye. Bye.